One of the things I miss most about living in this area was the plethora of gardens that were accessible and also free. And this is Mead Gardens in Orlando. And ironically, we saw this William Bartram trail sign. Um, this trail, not sure far how far it goes, but we've been on the William Bartram trail in Georgia as well. Uh, I think it goes up into North Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, here we are. We're going to do a little tour of uh, everything here. They have great facilities here. Restrooms, ample parking, uh, beautiful moss-covered trees, picnic tables in abundance. Uh, and there is a building here. I don't recall that built being here when I lived here. So let's uh, check this place out. Here's a map for orientation. Things, highlights of the gardens. And a brief history of the gardens. Uh, connected to Rollins College, of course. They've decorated the front here quite well with some poinsettias to be in the season, but there's still some tropicals that are blooming this time of year. There we go. It's a nice, beautiful bush here. Here's a patch of bromeliads. This is the cast iron plant. It's a shade lover. Whenever you're around any body of water in Florida, even if there's no sign, there are likely alligators in a lake. So always take caution. And for those who say there is no change of season in Florida, you're just not looking. Here we have a stately cypress tree. And of course, it wouldn't be cypress trees without cypress knees. And that's what these are called. I believe they've uh, cracked down on the harvesting of these.
for art use and stuff like that. People would make clocks out of it. Tables. But yeah. It's a noisy hawk. It's a uh, good venue for a wedding. Looks like someone was recently married. It's all lined with these magnolia trees here as a backdrop. Very beautiful. He started on the hay to walk the other side. going to be a wet bunny.
I guess these are all from the recent storms. Here it just pulled up all the the roots and everything. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, there's the bunny. Oh, you see the bunny again? Yeah, he's eating. Bunny, bunny. Yeah. Let's see if we can find him. Yeah, the gardens here really took a hit with the last uh, hurricane that came through. This is all really fresh. As you can see the all the leaves from where they cut it, cut the path. All the up uprooted trees here. These are mimosas. They're actually invasive species, but the blossoms smell like watermelon. Turns out this tree is just what the monarchs were looking for. See if we can find one here. Uh. Sucker, come on, land, land, land. <laughs> there were, there were two that were circling around. They've gone way. I got pictures oh, there's on one. It, but I just need a, I there's one right here. There we go. One has lit on the mimosa. These giant bushes are Mexican sunflowers. They've recently been cut back, so they won't bloom for, I don't know, maybe another month, and they'll be in full bloom. This is called the pepper lily. There's some salvia, some dwarf chanel, African bush daisies. These pentas are still in bloom. I love these flowers, but they're, uh, they only grow as a annual where I am. They come in a variety of colors. Of course, the Mexican heather.
The Syrah's considered it a weed. I guess they're using it more for shrubbery now. The, the people are finding out that weeds are important. This is a uh, plumbago. Plumbago. Not sure what that plant is. <laughs> Has a almost looks like a fig. And it does have a fruit on it. Let's see if I can get it to focus a little better. There we go. It looks like coral before it opens up. Look at that. It's really pretty. And then there's there it is after it uh opens a little more. Very beautiful plant. Now I can't tell if this plant has other plants inside of it. But check it out. It's called Batface Capilla. Batface Capilla. Crazy. This is a pretty tall plant. This is over three feet tall. And that is a red fire spike and look at this over here it looks like foxglove but it's massive this is a big bush let's see if we can find a plate for this some of them have plates some of them don't look at this though it's really pretty Yeah, I don't see a plate for this one, unfortunately. looks like some kind of honeysuckle. Look at it on its long stems. We have a lot of coleus. Some Impatience. And a plant that begins with a bee that I can't remember the name. Bougainvillea is what I want to say. <laughs> this plant's called a tractor seat. This plant is called a queen's wreath. I guess it makes its own wreath. It's really beautiful. Very viney. I love this. These are some tall bougainvilleas. Very tall. And I always remember these blooming this time of year with their little 
firecrackers. It's called firecracker fern. Some purple spiked flowers, lavender. Looks like they kind of do their little bloom and drop. Another pavilion here by the butterfly garden. I've done these little moss balls. Isn't that cute? Very creative. They've hung it on this very nicely crafted rod iron. I guess it's rebar. Rebar uh, arbor here. Very nicely made. Here's a variety of bougainvillea that's actually blooming right now. Oh, and the other plant back there that I couldn't identify immediately that was pink or red and the white one, those are both uh, begonias. Begonias. I like how they've planted these poinsettias. I grew up nearby and uh, we had poinsettias in our side yard as a hedge. That's beautiful. That color is so vibrant, especially when the sun hits it. I've always liked these ferns. I think they're called foxtail ferns. I can't remember. I've kind of gotten away from my <clears throat> knowledge of botanicals. I used to make it a uh, practice to know both the common names and and the uh, Latin names of most common plants, especially house plants, and then outdoor tropicals as well. But you can see why I grew up down here, so there was a lot to uh, take in and learn. Here's some in their natural habitat. Bromeliads love growing on trees. And this shrub. This will kind of take over even a fence line. And I love it because it has all these different shades of purple and white as it age. front side of this wedding venue. Even the azaleas are in bloom.
One of the things I miss most about living in this area was the plethora of gardens that were accessible and also free. And this is Mead Gardens in Orlando. And ironically, we saw this William Bartram trail sign. Um, this trail, not sure far how far it goes, but we've been on the William Bartram Trail in Georgia as well. Uh, I think it goes up into North Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, here we are. We're going to do a little tour of uh, everything here. They have great facilities here, restrooms, ample parking, uh, beautiful moss-colored covered trees, picnic tables in abundance. Uh, and there is a building here. I don't recall that built being here when I lived here. So let's uh, check this place out. Here's a map for orientation. Things, highlights of the gardens. And a brief history of the gardens. Uh, connected to Rollins College, of course. They've decorated the front here quite well with some poinsettias to be in the season, but there are still some tropicals that are blooming this time of year. There we go. It's a nice, beautiful bush here. Here's a patch of bromeliads. This is the cast iron plant. It's a shade lover. Whenever you're around any body of water in Florida, even if there's no sign, there are likely alligators in a lake. So always take caution. And for those who say there is no change of season in Florida, you're just not looking. Here we have a stately cypress tree. And of course, it wouldn't be cypress trees without cypress knees and that's what these are called I believe they've uh, cracked down on the harvesting of these
for art use and stuff like that. People would make clocks out of it, tables, but yeah.